if we're looking for white space, we're never gonna find that if we're following the existing roadmaps. We're at our best when we can reframe the problem in a new way that defies the previous conventions. And very often, if you ask the question differently, if you look at what problem you're really trying to solve, you'll arrive at different solutions. We never dictate how to accomplish the goals. And very often, it's going to require multidisciplinary teams coming together from different communities. We'll find that teams come together across academia, across industry, to bring together new capabilities, new ideas, and new approaches that couldn't have been accomplished by any one of those teams alone. The Delta program is a great example of this approach. The primary purpose there, the reason we're spending all this energy heating and cooling buildings, is for the comfort of the people inside. What if we could develop technologies that focus on that problem? Not worry about how we get better heating and cooling of all the space around the people, but zero in on the comfort of the people themselves. We are working on uh, localized personal thermoregulation. You can replace the heating and cooling of large room in businesses and home by doing the eating and uh, cooling near the skin. We've been working on wearable, uh, advanced material, flexible material for over a decade, mainly for sensing application. Now we are applying it for energy saving. Basically, you'll see changes in the thickness of the textile, if it's uh, too cold or, or open the pores, if it's too hot and so on. So you'll see this smart adaptive textile that responds to temperature and humidity. You can wash the textile, you can move it, and it's all part integrated, seemingly integrated in the textile, but doing the job of localized heating and cooling. Eliminating the need to cool or eat the entire big room by having all the eating and cooling at the local uh, personal level on your skin will have tremendous saving of energy and, uh, and money. We're taking on a wide range of technologies and a wide range of applications in the energy space. What the Monitor program came in with was addressing this problem that everyone acknowledged and that everybody wanted to find a solution to but it came from a, a different angle of not just how do we solve the technical problem of better detecting and quantifying methane leaks, but how do we do that in a way that's practical and useful for the producers who actually have to field this technology. It sets a pretty high bar, and it requires a lot of different technologies and teams to come together. Here at Rebellion Photonics, we're working on changing the way gas detection is done. You know, these billion dollar, multi-billion dollar facilities are all being run with like 1950s style technology. So they all have these point sensors. They're prone to very high false alarm rates. And you know, they just don't tell an operator where a gas leak is. We've developed innovative camera imaging systems that can visualize gas leaks. So we can detect them at the, the source of the leak and then feed that all the way back to the control room. You know, our vision for this technology is you would attach it to everyone's clothes, like a wearable type system, like their existing, you know, protective equipment, almost like a hard hat. And then the oil and gas worker can walk around performing their normal duty. And this sensor could then detect any gas leak and notify them. The financial reward from having a better monitoring program would easily pay for itself. And then on top of that, you have the added benefits of, um, you know, improved safety as well as, you know, reduced environmental impact. And I, you know, the industry cares about all of those things. You know, it's not just a, a bottom line industry. So if we can save even uh, 50, 60 percent of this energy cost, it would be tremendous gain and translated to billions of dollars. With RPE funding, we've been able to, to create this really exciting product that the industry wants. You know, looking back on it, a lot of people said you could never do it. You know, a couple of, of young kids new to oil and gas, you're not going to change an industry. And we've really proven them wrong. Our challenges are immense, and we know that. A go-steady approach of incremental improvements is not going to get us there. We need to bring in some of these out-of-left-field approaches that if we're going to solve these problems. We need the disruption, we need something unforeseen in order to change the equation for our energy future.